This is the six steps to a takedown. If you're missing any of these steps, you're definitely not taking me down or anybody good at wrestling. Step number one and number two, I'm gonna combine these together. It's getting in a good stance and making contact the correct way. This is where a lot of people are losing takedowns and most of the time, it's where I'm looking for a takedown when an opponent makes contact the wrong way. So when I'm wrestling, I first gotta get into a good stance. I do not start my drill by standing up, grabbing onto my partner, and then getting in a stance. I start away from the person, in a good stance, and I make contact the correct way. There's three ways I like to make contact. I'm either gonna start at the wrist or start low, and climb up high so I can start wrist one or two and climb up to the tie up I like. The reason why that's a great way to tie up is your hands are low protecting your legs as you go to reach. So they're, they're, if we turn a little bit of an angle, they're protecting my legs here as I go to reach. If I'm reaching up high, it's exposing my legs and I can get taken down. Number two, reaching with your backhand. So your forward leg is more vulnerable because it's forward, it's closer to your opponent. So you wanna use your forward hand to protect your legs, just putting it in the way, a lot of times will make people not wanna shoot. Then your back hand, I normally do three things. I can go thumb block, I can go collar tie, or I'll go right for an inside tie. You can also go wrist, but that's kinda of what we talked about in the beginning. So lead hand down, back hand, thumb block, collar, or inside tie. Now the third thing, which I actually prefer the most, is making contact with my head. So I keep my hands down, I make contact with my head first, and I actually don't even mind my athletes collar tying with their lead hand when they go to make contact. Because their head's in the way, and if the person decides to shoot as you go to reach, your head will be able to block them. Because you're actually touching them with your head, you can feel, because of the, you know, the whatever, neurons and nerves in your head, you can feel the person lower their level and you can be able to down block, right? So if I make contact with my head first, even if I go to reach and I see him down, going to shoot, I can down block, I can feel him change levels. So do not make the mistake of drilling like this and then going down into your stance. Get in a good stance, not touching your partner, practice making contact the right way. Step number three, getting to your tie-up. You need to know what your tie-up is. If it's an underhook, get to your underhook. If it's a Russian tie, get to your Russian tie, collar tie, inside tie. You have to know where you like to wrestle and hand fight to that position. So step one, good stance. Step two, make contact the right way. Step three, hand fight to your tie-up. For me, I'll go underhook, so I'll go club, underhook, now I'm in my tie-up. Again, whatever you guys like to be, just hand fight to Russian or collar inside, whatever you like to go to, hand fight to that tie-up. Now step four, this is another one that a lot of people don't really get and don't really understand. It's the setup. Step four is setting your shot up. If you don't set your shot up, you're not gonna get to the legs. And the, uh, the tie up is not the setup. The setup is this, three things, push, pulls, and fakes. When would I shoot based on each of these setups? Well, for pushing, I'll shoot when I feel pressure back into me. So if I'm pushing into him and I feel pressure back into me, I know when I go to shoot, he'll be coming into me as I go to shoot, which is good, right? It makes, it makes me get to the leg quicker. So if he's put, I feel that pressure, I go to shoot now, he's falling into me. If he's backing away and not pushing into me, when I go to shoot, I'll end up shooting and missing the leg because he's moving away from him, so away from me. So I want to build that pressure up whatever type I have, and then attack once I feel that pressure right back into me. Number two is pulls. When would I shoot on a pull? I'm gonna shoot on a pull when I feel the person try to stand up. So if I have my underhook here, and I'm pulling down on the shoulder, when I feel pressure on the, my hand, kind of pressure upwards, I'll go to shoot. And the reason why this is the perfect time is because when I release when I stop pulling, so I pull, when I stop pulling and release the pressure, he'll come up a little bit and that will allow me to get to the legs. So if I'm here and I'm pulling down and I feel that pressure, I'll release, he'll pop up and I'll shoot. Pretty easy to see from the collar tie position. So if I'm pulling down here, I feel him start to stand up, 
I'll let go, that pop up will allow me to shoot. And a lot of times it will be very little against a better wrestler. Now, number three, the fake. Faking is also a great way to set your shot up. So you get to your tie up, you can you know, do different types of combos, but I can fake here, drop here, a lot of different options. But faking is also a great way to set your shot up. Now, if you're wrestling higher level athletes, I recommend you combine some stuff together, right? You may need to push, he pushes back, pull, fake, and drop into your shot. You may have to add some things together, but understanding when to shoot based off of those three will help you become a better wrestler. And if you're doing that every single rep, because that's probably the hardest thing to really get a feel for, is like the pressure when they stand up, knowing when to shoot. But if you're drilling it every single rep, you're gonna get that good feel, okay? Number five, nobody really has any, any issues with this. It's just executing the shot or the throw, whatever your technique is. So once you get to your tie up, you, put, you build that pressure, whatever, and you just hit the shot, right? It could be high crotch, whatever the technique is, and you finish, okay? So that's self-explanatory, or maybe it's a throw, whatever, build some pressure, and you throw. Now, I separate this step six from step five because there's so many people make mistakes on the finish. You need to finish 100% correctly all the way to the mat. You can collect a wrist. A lot of times I'll have my athletes go takedowns right to turns just so they can get used to finishing the proper way. And this is where I see a lot of actually elite level wrestlers make the biggest mistakes. So you got, you know, we just went to Drexel Division I Wrestling College and that was the mistake that so many of the wrestlers were making and Coach Azevedo just kept saying, well, yelling at them or whatever, or just kept circling people up. Like, you keep making this mistake, you're not finishing all the way, you're not finishing properly. If you don't finish properly, you're gonna lose the takedown. And a couple different scenarios that will happen is one, you can get rolled through. So say I finish, say I'm going for my double and I'm, I'm just lazy with my finish, I can get rolled and lose the takedown. Or um, stuff that happens pretty often is, well, I'll give you actually two more scenarios. Another one is funk rolls or grabbing your ankles. So if I go to finish here and I don't hide my ankles, you know, I might lose the takedown there. Then the last one, which I see very often, is with a single leg. You know, you shoot a single here. They're kind of lazy with this finish part. They might do a little bit of a trip and they'll just tap here. And this is how they'll lose the takedown here in an actual match. Because they don't have enough reps of actually, you know, finishing all the way through, the person will just kick that leg free and you'll lose a takedown there. So those are the six steps. Let me hit two, just two clean reps all the way through so you guys understand what the six steps would look like as I'm drilling. So I start in a good stance. I make contact the right way. Boom, building pressure. One more. Even here, I gotta be very clean with this finish. Not make a mistake. Shoulder tight, drive, 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 all the way through. So those are the six steps to a takedown. Please don't make any of those mistakes. Coaches, keep your wrestlers accountable. And make sure you subscribe and hit that bell because I have a killer video coming out on pins and pin escapes. So if you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure you have that bell rung, subscribe for future content.